If you let go of your hindrance, you will unfold in an instance. 5,000 starving children in a lotus position. Meditating, levitating, you can hear the growth of the wisdom. If you don't change your act, the slaves won't last. Follow the eightfold path, spark a glow in your sixth sense. Whisper and own with your lips then, flow with the rhythm. The goal with this ism is for this hallucination generation to flip it to meditation generation. Cause the game that you are playing can't save this big of nation. Cause your thought about wealth is corny as hell. The sutras teach it in stories and texts. Don't torture yourself with the forces of self. Keep walking the realms and your thoughts will then melt. Infinite compassion is the blissfulness in action. Sit and feel your back turn inward and the matter. This solves and the shunya will bring peace to your mind. Shant, um mani padme um, and breathe for some time.
as I can see, the basic mistake is that we've invented this wonderful system of language and calculation. And that it is at once too simple to deal with the complexity of the world and also we are liable to confuse that system of symbols with the world itself just as we confuse say money with wealth a lot of people are in business to make money instead of wealth when they make the money they don't know what to do with it and so in the same way we confuse happiness with status and we confuse ourselves as living organisms which are one with this whole universe with something we call our personality now what is our personality? Our personality is what we call our image. Our image of ourselves. And also our thought about ourselves, our idea of ourselves. This is the person. In other words, what people meet and understand, and what I understand as Alan Watts, is a big act, which is not really me. Because in the image of Alan Watts, there are not all my unconscious processes, both psychological and physical. The construction of my brain is not contained in the concept Alan Watts. And the concept Alan Watts does not contain the inseparable relationships which I have with all the rest of the universe. And therefore that concept is a fraud. And when it's mistaken for the real me, there's a confusion because if somebody says to me, Alan Watts, do something about it, the concept Alan Watts can't do anything. In other words, because it's only a concept, you can't make it lift a weight just as three is a concept. Three, the number. You can't make just plain three do anything. So also you can't wrap up parcels with the equator. It's a useful imaginary line, but it can't do anything. But we all feel that this concept of ourselves, which we call our personality or our ego, can do something. Because we think it really exists, and I'll tell you why we think it exists. What happens when you, if I were to say to you, now look hard at the television screen, really look at it. What do you do, as distinct from just watching it in the ordinary way, when you say, now I really gotta see that, what do you do? Notice that you tighten muscles all around here, that you frown a little, you clench your teeth perhaps. Now what has that got to do with seeing anything clearly? There's absolutely nothing to do with it. Same thing when you listen carefully. Now listen, catch everything that's said, and you start tightening up around your ears. That has nothing to do with hearing clearly. Now from the moment we were little children, when teachers in class screamed at us, pay attention, we go tight in various ways either to see or hear more clearly, to concentrate, or to will something which is supposed to be difficult to do. And that constitutes a habitual tension over the whole body that's there almost all the time. And that feeling of unnecessary tension is as it were the material sensation upon which we fasten this concept of I. We hang it on to that feeling. The concept is not us. The feeling of tension is completely phony. It has nothing to do with success in seeing, hearing, or acting. And so we get the marriage of an illusion with a falsehood. And that we call ourselves. And no wonder we feel cut off from everything, alienated, frightened of life and death. So what has to happen is we have to come back to a sane, view of our own life, which is the way we really are, an organism functioning in terms of the whole environment, with the whole environment, instead of this funny little separate personality. But how are we going to do that? People say, oh, you can't change human nature overnight. You're asking us to give up the ego. And that's the most difficult of all things to do. Actually, it isn't because the ego doesn't exist. But of course, if you try to give up your ego with your ego, then it'll take you to the end of time. Because this is the point. You can't transform yourself. You can't make yourself sane. You can't make yourself loving. You can't make yourself unselfish. 
And yet it's absolutely necessary that we be that way. It's absolutely necessary. If we are going to hand over the direction of nature to nature, which is what it comes to, it's absolutely necessary that we let go of ourselves and it can't be done. Not by anything that we call doing it, acting, willing, or even just accepting things. You can't do it. Why? Because you don't really exist as that kind of a separate ego or personality. It's just an idea based on a phony feeling. So when it comes down to it, it's shocking news for us, for the human race, for our pride. You're only making a mess by trying to put things straight. You're trying to straighten out a wiggly world and no wonder you're in trouble. So you can't do anything. So you can't transform yourself. And what can you do? What happens then if you actually realize you've come to a dead end? And the human race has come to a dead end, in my opinion. What then? Commit suicide? Or is there something else? What happens when you just wait? There's nothing you can do. You watch. And all you see is what goes on that is happening of itself. You're breathing. The wind is blowing. The trees are waving. Your blood is circulating. Your nerves are tingling. It's all going on of itself. Sangha, Buddhism, Buddhism, 
So you're sitting right up onto your sit bones. Your feet are flat on the floor. You can place your hands either face down or facing up on your lap. And then just gently close your eyes. Sitting up nice and tall with your eyes closed. Bring your attention to your breath. Now at this moment, we're not trying to change the breath, but just simply become aware of how you are being breathed at this moment. Perhaps there is some tightness, perhaps your breath is shallow. Just be aware. And let's together deepen the breath. And as we're doing this, you're bringing calm, the calmness to your body, relaxing your body. So we will inhale for a count of four and exhale for a count of four. So at this moment, we're just going to even out our breath. As you inhale, as you inhale, as you inhale, and as you exhale, exhale. Aware of your breath as you inhale. As you inhale, as you inhale, as you inhale, and as you exhale. 